Hey guys, how are you all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic. Welcome back to the channel. And today we have for you guys is another Ninjago uh, review. Now, before I get into this review, I do want to say that I am sorry for not getting a season three and four, or I'm sorry, episode three and four uh, review up quickly. I had a lot of stuff going on with vacation and all that. Um, but what I decided to today, since episode uh, five and six released, is make a review for episodes three. Four, five, and six, or as you're going to see in the title, three through six. So before we get started, um, I have the names here that I pulled up on the Ninjago Season 11 wiki page. So episode three, uh, aka 101, is called A Rocky Start. Now this one um, essentially begins with the ninja uh, going on vacation, right? They can't find anything to do, as we remember from episode one and two. And, uh, they essentially, oh, shit, you know, before I start, I better say spoilers. If you have not seen episode, any of these episodes, um, there are heavy spoilers in this, uh, thing. So, anyway, sorry, I'll put that in the title. Well, that, that being said, there are spoilers. So, the ninja have nothing to do, and essentially they, you know, Master Wu's like, you need to go find something to do, you guys are stupid, you guys are fat and lazy, whatever. So, they're like, okay, we gotta go do something. So, essentially, they all go to, um, the desert. They're like, oh, we'll just go there, you know, that's pretty cool. And, I mean, that's basically what episode 3 is. They leave, they pack, they go to the desert, and while they're in the desert, they find some mirages. And they also find Beetle Ernie, or Beetle Harney, Beetle Harry, or I think Jace is Beetle, Beetle something. God, that was last week. So, Beetle something. Jay had some funny name for it, Beetle Harry, or Beetle Ernie, or something. And, um, essentially, they get, they run into these, this Beetle, but... They kind of outrun it in the, land, in the land bounty, which is a really cool new vehicle. It seems like every new season we get a new version of the bounty. So they leave, and then in the end, you see that there's a bunch of these beetles, and Lloyd's like, this is not good. This is really not good. So that's essentially episode three. Now, for a rocky start, I'm going to give it a... We'll give it a nine out of ten. I think that the episode started a little bit jokey, a little bit too lighthearted, because, again, Ninjago has slight moments of levity, but nothing too where it's like, oh, this is Spongebob, or this is Adventure Time, or this is, you know, whatever. Um, regular show, yeah, the Lego Ninjago movie, even. You know, it's not meant to be a comedy. So, I did feel like the... the worst parts about episode one two and three a rocky start is the comedy it just doesn't work when you're dealing with the ninja and i get it they're adults and they play video games adults play video games whatever but at the same time it's like eh, you know so when they do the latter part of episode three really really works and it's tension building and it's really cool so again i'm going to give episode three a nine out of ten now going into episode four the Belly of the Beast. Um, this is a pretty straightforward one, too. I mean, uh, it, it begins right with the third one uh, ended with all these beetles, and they're like, what are we going to do? And uh, it turns out that escaping from these beetles, uh, one of them crashed into the land bounty and destroyed one of their equipment's uh, pieces that they need to, you know, really rocket power out of there and get away from the beetles. And they're like, well, we're screwed out in here. They, they're kind of on, like, a big land mass, and they're like, what do we do? Uh, we can't escape them. We're done. So then Zane and a bunch of other ninja go, okay, what are we going to do? And Zane's like, okay, let's, some of us, one of us has to get eaten so that we can go into the belly of the beast, no pun intended, and then extract the, uh, you know, part or piece that they need to fix the land bounty so that they can leave the desert and escape the beetle. And the ninja are like, are you freaking nuts? That ain't going to work. We're going to die. So Zane's like, you know what? I don't need to breathe in space. I should be fine here too. So they go in, he gets eaten willingly, and uh, he finds it. Long story short, some really cool tension happens where Zane kind of gets captured. Cole falls down a cliff a little bit, and of course they get him out and he's all fine. But as far as the humor goes, I think the humor was less in this episode because it's something to do. Um, and again, Ninjago goes through these phases where, uh, I mean, we've seen it at the beginning of season one. We've seen it with the, uh, the prologue, the, you know, starter season is uh, what you want to call it. And we've also seen it in Season 3, Season 4, you know, the ninja don't really have an enemy to face, so they get jobs, they are bored, they make jokes, they play video games. So, really, yes, Episode 1 through 3, the worst part is the humor, but it fits for the story, so that's why I'm not, you know, destroying it too much. Uh, as far as Episode 4, Belly of the Beast, I'd say that the humor goes a little bit less so, because they have something to do, but at the same time, it's like, well... You know, it, it might not be working. The comedy might not stick. But all in all, I think it's fine. Um, the episode has a lot of cool, intense moments, and it's a really good plot, and we're advancing. Again, this is episode four, so we kind of need to get somewhere by now. So them trying to find a quest, they definitely found a quest. And this is also where we see um, 
Oh, what's his name? Oh, yeah, Clutch Powers. We see Clutch freaking Powers get interviewed, and it's pretty awesome. Sadly, he is not voiced by the same guy who voices Clutch in the movie, although uh, it is canon, so that's kind of cool. But um, he has an eye patch. He's a little bit of a grizzled person, kind of like Logan. He's a professor now, but he's also not what he seems. We'll get that to that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, episode four. I'm also gonna I'm gonna give episode four a I'm gonna give it a ten out of ten. I thought it was a great episode. The humor worked when it had to, and it had a great a lot of great cool moments. Um, going into episode five now, the ones that aired today on Cartoon Network: booby traps and how to survive them. Now, this is where the meat of Season 11, Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu, comes into play. We see them escape the Beatles, and we see Clutch Power. So basically, they have to go into this volcano that they discover, and they're like, okay, well, the first thing didn't do too well with the Beatles. Let's go into this, you know, pyramid. Why not? You know, it's another adventure. And Clutch Powers also has a reason to get there, which is one of my favorite things about Season 11 is that the, it has 11-minute episodes. Now, with these 11-minute episodes, there's 30 of them, you can have a lot of character development. You can have one episode solely devoted to one or two groups of characters and also have that tie into um, Season 11 as a whole, you know, which is really, really awesome. Um, so, essentially, uh, Clutch Powers has his own reason for not you know, going in there, and, uh, he's kind of a bit of a scaredy cat now, he kind of really doesn't want to do that, he thinks that his adventuring days are over, and that he should give it up, and just be a professor, you know, so, uh, Gail Gossip is like, you gotta go in there, right, and he's like, no, I'm not going in there, crazy, so, that's where the ninja come in, and of course, they both have their reasons, and they both go in, uh, they have a bunch of booby traps, Clutch Powers leads them, and, uh, he kind of knows his way around, but he also kind of doesn't, you can see that he's starting to get a little bit floppy, kind of like the ninja in the beginning of the episode, which I kind of like that parallel, uh, that they're both kind of rusty right now. Now, with this episode comes not only the exploration of a pyramid, and the big inclination of, uh, Clutch Powers, but also Asphira. Now, we have seen a bunch of pictures of Asphira uh, on, on Google and YouTube videos of mini figs of her, uh, you know, just a bunch of cool stuff. But this is the first episode where we see Asphira in the pyramid. Um, apparently, Zane, as I mentioned, I believe, in the first uh, review, Zane gets these, like, weird dreams or illusions where Asphira, or a snake, um, shoots him with fire and he's dodging and he gets hit, which is, like, the worst dodge ever. Um, but we actually see Asphira in that vision, and, you know, part of the vision, Zane's like, oh someone let her in there, and she's pissed, and she wants to get out and, you know, seek her vengeance. And Jay accidentally does a thing where he activates it, and Asphira pops out, and we see a little bit of exposition on why she's in there and what she wants to do. The ninja kind of like, okay, you know, whatever, get back in your cave, stupid snake, and she's like, no, I'm gonna get you, and she basically, um, essentially zaps Kai, the fire ninja, and takes his elemental power of fire and absorbs it into her, Kai hits the ground, and she now, like, when she comes out of the cavern, she's the blue snake, kind of like Pythor in a way, um, but when she absorbs uh, Kai's energy, she is essentially a fire elemental snake, which is really, really cool. We've never seen a snake be able to change elementals, or absorb powers, kind of like Skylar, and, uh, you know, take their powers, which is really cool, and already Asphira is the most powerful snake. Now, I'm not sure, I could have missed it. Um, so tell me in the comments below, but I don't know what race of snake Asphira is. I don't know if she's Serpentine or Venomari or, uh, you know, any of those. So I could be wrong about that. But anyway, tell me in the comments if you know what Asphira really is. Um, I have a feeling she might be an all-different snake, because we've seen all the snake races before, and they never had that much power. So essentially, she zaps Kai's power and kind of chucks him out a window, and, uh, not a window, uh, the, the pyramid. They kind of, um... I said that wrong. Shit. <laughs> she zaps Clutch Powers out of the out of the um, pyramid. So essentially, Clutch Powers leaves. He's like, "I'm out of here." He's running, and the ninja, by the meantime, are kind of chained up to a wall. You know, she's like, "Oh, I'm not gonna kill you because you gave me your power, but I'm gonna leave now, so see you bye." And the ninja, like, "Well, we're screwed. What do we do?" So then, Clutch Powers, the hero, goes, "Oh, I'm out of here. F that." So he runs, and then essentially um, runs into Asphira, and he takes this little circle thing, and it's like, oh, I got this one on my travels, you can't stop me, and she's like, well, we'll see about that, and she kind of does this chant, and shoots Clutch Powers out of the way, back into the Ninjago City, and that's essentially where it is, the ninja are in peril, this was a great episode, it had a, a, a few funny moments in the beginning, but, you know, this is the part where it starts to get more serious, I think, and the, uh, especially now that we see Asphira, 
And Kai got screwed up, man. The ninja are totally screwed up. They're all bound. Uh, but in the meantime, Pixel, a.k.a. Samurai X, is not present. She's somewhere else, which we'll find out in, the, in a minute. Um, but yeah, I really loved this episode. It was so good. It had one or two funny moments that weren't lame or weird. And a lot of cool action scenes and a really good exposition with that spirit. So I'm going to give episode uh, 5 a 10 out of 10. Now, going into episode 6, The News Never Sleeps. This is actually... My favorite episode so far, and it has nothing to do with the ninja. In fact, the ninja aren't even in the episode. So it starts out with Lil Nelson. If you remember Lil Nelson, he was in season six, Skybound, and he was in the first episode. Essentially, Lil Nelson broke both of his legs, and he's in a wheelchair in Ninjago Hospital. And the ninja, kind of like how we had like Tom Holland and Jake Gyllenhaal uh, in, uh, shit, what's the girl's name? Something. Zoe. Z Zendaya, Zendaya, that's it, Zendaya. Um, you know, they go to the hospitals and they basically visit sick patients to make them feel better, which is great. And essentially, um, even though they're not old enough to see the film. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, this whole aspect of that in real life plays into season six where the ninja go visit a hospital to see Lil Nelson and make him basically honorary ninja for the day. And uh, Lil Nelson keeps that. You know, he's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm the purple ninja, you know, Darius the brown ninja, so I could be the freaking purple ninja, and that was a really cool moment in season six. Now, we finally, in season 11, get to see Lil Nelson again. He's a little older, and he's finally doing paper routes, and uh, he, he's not, you know, injured, but there's one scene where Lil Nel where Nelson um, runs in his house to get ready to do the paperwork, paper route, and you actually see a bunch of paintings on the wall. And, uh, they're all him, like, breaking his legs and arms. I thought it was pretty funny. It's sad, but pretty funny. Um, so essentially, we have Lil Nelson Return and, uh, Antonia, which is really cool. Now, as far as I'm concerned, um, from doing my research, Antonia is a character created by a fan. I'm not sure if she, if she was a sick fan, like, like, dying fan. I hope not. Could be true. I, I again, I hope not. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was just like a normal fan. Maybe she won a contest. I'm not entirely sure. But someone created Antonia, and they've been waiting for a while, for a while, and hinting, and finally she is in uh, episode six of season eleven. And it's so cool. We actually get to see two characters, Lil Nelson and Antonia, characters who really don't mean anything to the the plot. Essentially break off and tell their own story and like i said that's the best part of season 11 we can see that and we can actually you know experience what lesser known characters think about the fighting think about the crime and it's really cool because little nelson's like oh i'm just gonna deliver papers but then it turns out antonio's like you know you're not doing that in ninjago city it's gonna get real left up real quick and he's like what do you mean it's just ninjago you know but she's like oh there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens with uh, biker gangs and you know gins and all that stuff so that was kind of cool but we actually see as Fear's Wrath on Ninjago City. There's a bunch of pyro snakes freaking blowing buildings up and destroying everything. It's crazy. And, you know, they're kind of on bikes and they're dodging. You know, it's kind of funny, the parkour that they do. But having... I'm trying to think. Having, like, you know, these characters in these situations where, again, it, it, the ninja aren't even in this episode, but it's perfect because Antonia talks to him about, look... You know, fighting takes a toll on everyone. Every citizen has to do their part. It's not just the ninja and H Samurai X, which is really cool. Samurai X Pixel is in this episode, and she does a really cool action scene with some of the pirate snakes. They mention her. They mention everyone. They're like, everyone's going to do their part. You know, the news never sleeps. We have to tell people what's going on about these pirate snakes and uh, spread the news. So Lil Nelson's like, all right, let's do it. Um, but also, they run into Clutch Powers, who previously got shot out of the uh, pyramid. And he's he's like, oh, the ninja are in trouble, help, and he faints, and he goes to the hospital. Now, at this point, Lil Nelson's like, we need to go say something. You know, the ninja are in trouble, and it's our duty to do that. You know, we're the news carriers. And Antonio's like, no, don't do that. But Lil Nelson's like, hey, you told me we should do that. So they go, and they, they do this really perilous trek. Uh, they avoid py pyro snakes, and they go to the monster where Master Wu is, which was awesome, and they see Master Wu, and, uh, this is the thing, again, so episode 1 through 3 had some really funny moments, but to me, they weren't fun, they were funny, I laughed, but it didn't feel right for the show. Finally, you know, Master Wu gets mad in episode 1, he goes, you know, uh, it's not a bathtub, or it's not a hot tub, and, like, freaking, you know, 
aesthetic goes around him like an anime. And I don't like that. Uh, I'm sure I'll get used to it, but, you know, that's not really a negative, so to speak. It's just my own personal complaint. I'll probably get used to it in the future. But it's cool to see Master Wu being Master Wu again. You know, what's going on? Where the ninja? You know, that kind of thing. It was really cool to see that. Um, and, of course, he thanks little Nelson, uh, kind of referring to him when Lloyd was a little kid. Uh, I think after he was evil, or trying to be evil. Um, and Master, Master Wu leaves, and uh, he tries to go find him, and then they take off. So, episode 6, um, The News Never Sleeps, is by far my favorite episode of season 11 so far. I really, really enjoy it, and of course it's going to get a 10 out of 10. So, uh, yeah, I think um, I think we're in a great spot for Ninjago. I think a lot of people instantly hate Ninjago just because it's new. Uh, we've seen that with season 8. Everyone hated it. We see it with the Lego Ninjago movie. Everyone hated it. I personally love everything Ninjago. I do have some complaints, but I'm not a hater. I'm not going to say, oh, it looks like crap, F. You know, I say with everything, never trust anyone's opinion. You can watch people, like watching me, like you are right now, but watch it for yourself. Play it for yourself. Listen to it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Experience it for yourself, and then, you know... Then have your own opinion. Don't just base it off of someone else and be like a drone on the computer. You know, don't be a mindless drone. Experience it for yourself. So if you are worried that season 11 is more kitty or it's not a, you know, it's not as good as what we've been getting. I think that the first three episodes were a little rocky. No pun intended again. Um, they were still great episodes. Don't get me wrong. There hasn't been really a bad Ninjago episode. Day of the Departed isn't amazing. Not bad. Um, so I do think that, you know, we are in a really safe and great place for Ninjago, especially with this new uh, 11 minutes and everything. I think it's going to be great. So anyway, guys, again, uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, review. It was a bit of a longer review, longer video, but I wanted to give you guys my thoughts and a little recap of each episode. Again, um, tell me if you want me to recap each episode in depth like I've been doing, or if you just want me to skip ahead and tell you reviews um, for spoiler's sake or anything like that. Um, so make sure to tell me in the comments what you want me to do for the future for next Saturday. I will hopefully get uh, episode, ooh, geez, what are we doing here? Uh, episode 7 and 8, which is titled Ninja vs. Lava and Snake Cata Sna Snake Tastrophe. Wow, that's hard to read. Snake Tastrophe. So, tell me what you want me to do. Do you want me to just go in depth like I've been doing in this video and the last one, or do you just want me to say reviews and scores? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get to watch these because they're really freaking cool, and we still need Ninjago Season 9 on DVD. I am waiting for that. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.